This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 3, this is the last and final section on duality and forgiveness. Part 1 David You are not a body and you are not in a body. You are a mind. Initially, that is an alien way of thinking. But gradually, you will start to think of yourself as mind because that is what you are. This goes beyond the idea of reincarnation of coming in and out of bodies. Again, you are not a body and you are not even in a body. That really flies in the face of experience in this world. It seems as if you are looking out from these eyes and hearing with these ears and smelling with this nose. Experientially, it seems very much that our experience is rooted in the body. But the Course tells us that this is not a fact. On the topic of the mind, the Course says, Mind reaches to itself. It is not made up of different parts which reach each other. It does not go out. Text Chapter 18, Section 6 About the body it says, The body is outside yourself and but seems to surround you, shutting you off from others and keeping you apart from them and them from you. Text Chapter 18, Section 6 The world is like a movie screen. Sometimes when you watch a movie, you feel identified with the characters. That is what so-called everyday life is like. You are so identified with the characters on the screen that you perceive them as yourself as your family members, your boss, etc. This is a major perceptual problem. All our grief comes in when we identify with what is on the screen. Another very fundamental idea is that mind cannot attack. Guilt arises from the belief that mind can attack. Mind can make up fantasies, like making up a movie. It can have characters act out and seem to attack one another verbally or physically. But it is just a fantasy. It is the split in the mind that throws the belief in attack out on the screen, where the figures seem to attack and be attacked. It is the mind's way of trying to escape the problem of thinking it has separated from God. This is a very fundamental idea. The mind cannot attack. But this is not how we think in day-to-day life. There is the belief that one person or mind can manipulate another mind. This takes many forms, like the idea of someone being seductive, for example. Can you hear what that implies? There is an interaction with one being made prey, as if manipulated to do something against one's own will. The Course says, that is impossible. If it was possible, 
where would the equality be in that? If one mind could dominate another mind, there would not be equality, and guilt would be justified. But you can see how deeply rooted these ideas are in the split mind. Minds cannot attack. They can just make up bodies to act out the fantasies. It is the perception of attack that brings on the defenses. As soon as the mind perceives attack in any form, it cannot help but respond with defense. The problem is with the misperception of attack. Early on in the workbook, Jesus tells us that we have not yet learned that attack and being attacked are the same. The same? That is not how it seems in this world. There seems to be a big difference between being attacked and being the attacker. But they are identical. They are just different forms of the same thing. If you have attack thoughts in your mind, it does not so much matter how you perceive it. It does not matter who you assign which role to. The attacker and the one attacked are the same. You have to come to the realization that attack is impossible. Otherwise you are going to keep perceiving attack and keep responding and reacting in defensive ways. This can take the form of magical maneuvers, fancy health structures, medicines and hospitals. All the different forms of armature. If you take it to the national level, it will look like armies and bombs used to guard the country or the handgun issue or crime. All of that is out there on the screen. There is not a problem with crime in the country. There is not a problem with guns. There is not a problem with defense spending and so on. That is all out there. The problem brings it back to me and my mind. To the realization that I still believe in attack. Friend, when you get into a situation of conflict, it is so easy to get sucked in. At work, at home, family stuff, in-laws, everybody is taking sides. David The key is transferring this to all these different circumstances. A situation is just a situation. Jesus knows that the mind in a deceived state does not believe that. It seems to be that some situations are more difficult. It is one thing, for instance, to go to a Course in Miracles group where everyone is talking about all these ideas. But then I have to deal with my in-laws or my boss at work. There is just a deep underlining belief that there is an order of difficulty in miracles. The first principle of the Course is that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. Friend, when I have a conflict with someone, sometimes I go home and start getting really angry. I feel like a little kid. I just want to kick my feet or hit somebody. When I think about it, I do not want to be responsible. I want to blame it on someone else. It is so hard for me to look at. I feel just like a little kid. I just want to lie down on the floor and kick my feet and scream and holler. 
David. That anger is a good topic to look at. Here's a statement that sometimes just feels like too much. Anger is never justified. Text chapter 30, section 6. This comes pretty late in the text. It is not to say that you won't get angry. It is not even saying that you shouldn't get angry. It is saying that it is never justified. If you really trace it back, say to the idea that I am responsible for what I see, text chapter 21, section 2, then you could see the fallacy of it. But there is such a tremendous projection of the cause of sacrifice and of guilt. The main ego dynamic is the belief that what you project out on the world is what you get rid of. That is how to get rid of it. Projection is the ego's way of minimizing or diminishing anger, threats and guilt. What the ego never tells the mind is that what you give away is what you keep. That is the fundamental law of heaven. That is how the sun was created. God extended himself in his likeness and attributes. That is how the sun came into being. It is the fundamental law of heaven. As soon as you start to see that, you begin to see that projection never gets you anything. Perceiving attack or responding with anger never brings you anything you want. As you go deeper into the metaphysics, you begin to generalize this principle more and more. It takes such a transfer of training. The Course says that as long as you perceive a physical world of duality, you are blind. It is not like when you have a healed perception that there is going to be a world there to see. The world was made as an attack on God. Workbook Part 2 When the mind fell asleep, it took what was truly visible, light and love, and made it invisible. And it made what does not exist visible. That is what the perceptual world is. Heaven disappeared as soon as perception was made. It is quite deep to see that the world is a perceptual hallucination. This is different from what other paths suggest. You can come to a perfected world in some sense. There have been religions that have talked about paradise on earth or even about making the body immortal, which is another extension of the same idea. The Course is saying, that what you made visible, what you see now, does not have any existence. And that when you can come to the vision of Christ, it won't be there anymore to see. This paragraph really gives us a key to what true forgiveness is. Pardon is always justified. It has a sure foundation. You do not forgive the unforgivable, nor overlook a real attack that calls for punishment. Salvation does not lie in being asked to make unnatural responses which are inappropriate to what is real. Instead, it merely asks that you respond appropriately to what is not real by not perceiving what has not occurred. Text chapter 30, section 6 That is deep. 
It merely asks that you respond appropriately to what is not real, which is the whole cosmos, by not perceiving what has not occurred. This is reminiscent of some of those lines about forgiving your brother for what he has not done. The Course is getting us to start to really question what we are seeing with the body's eyes and hearing with the body's ears. We begin to question whether what our senses report is reliable. Many of us have had an experience of thinking that we knew all the facts about a situation only to find out that we were really way off base. Our own motives and wishes had influenced our perception. We were reading into the scene something that really was not there at all. That is a good stepping stone. You are merely asked to see forgiveness as the natural reaction to distress that rests on error and thus calls for help. Forgiveness is the only sane response. It keeps your rights from being sacrificed. Text Chapter 30, Section 6 Through the ego's lens, forgiveness is shaky. The ego says we can try to forgive or we can try to pull the old forgive but do not forget routine. Or there is the arrogant approach to forgiveness. Because I have come along so far in my spiritual journey and I have really trained my mind, now I will stoop down to forgive you. This is a move way beyond all of that. It is seeing that forgiveness is the only sane response. If you want to keep peace of mind in your awareness, then forgiveness needs to become a natural, habitual response to everything. That is pretty drastic. We will continue reading the conclusion of this chapter section in tomorrow's episode.